Crop nutrition is one of the most important factors that we need to look at as farmers and agronomists and even growers. And so in this video, I'm going to be talking about my favorite topic in agriculture, and that's plant nutrition. For those that just randomly stumbled across this video, this is Agriculture Explained. We talk about all things agriculture. Um, it's an education platform to help you understand more um, about these fundamental concepts to help you on your farm or your garden or whatever. This whole YouTube channel is for free, so the only thing that I ask of you is to subscribe and share with a friend. Otherwise, let's get into it. So the easiest and most simple way that I like to think about crop nutrition is they're just little building blocks of the plant. So think of Lego. You know, you can stack Lego together, you have different Lego blocks, each Lego block has a different function. And so this is exactly how nutrition, or at least how I like to think of how nutrition works for plants. So if you think of um, this compound here, which is chlorophyll, or how I like to draw chlorophyll, it gets a bit more complicated, but let's go with this. It has a um, carbon backbone, some nitrogen, and some magnesium. Now, if we didn't have magnesium, this compound wouldn't be able to form. It's like missing a Lego brick on you know, a Lego car. It's just not going to work. You won't have the function. It's like having a car with no wheels. And so with plant nutrition, we need to have all of these nutrients, all these building blocks here, so that the plant can actually make these uh, proteins and compounds, um, enzymes, and all these different type of things. And so it's critical, like this is, it's very important that us as growers get the nutrition to our plants when needed. Because if we didn't have magnesium, like if that's not there, the plant won't be able to produce chlorophyll and it won't be able to um, photosynthesize. And so this is going to directly reduce our ability to produce food. And so that's why it's so important. So a nutrient in general is just a nutrient that the plant uses as a building block. And so there's two types of these nutrients. There's uh, essential nutrients or plant nutrients and there's non-essential plant nutrients. So really a essential plant nutrient uh, has three uh, principles or definitions to make sure that it's a nutrient. The first one is that the plant cannot grow without this nutrient. It has to have this nutrient, otherwise it cannot grow at all. The second principle is that it cannot be replaced. So some nutrients you can substitute you know, um, another nutrient for it. And so if you can substitute it out, it's not essential. And finally, it must have a direct role in a metabolic process. So this can be photosynthesis, it could be uh, respiration, it could be uh, the building of lipids. Any, like any of these metabolic processes, if it has a direct role in that, it is essential. So think of maybe making a cake. You know, you need flour, you need eggs, you need milk. You know, you know, sugar, all of those are essential. Actually, sugar might not be if you can substitute it out. So if you can substitute any of these out, you know, you can't really substitute eggs out. Maybe if you use duck eggs or something instead, but you know, you still need an egg. If you can substitute any of those out, it's not essential. And it has to be, you know, directly used in making the cake. It has to be, has to be used. An ingredient like chocolate, for example, you don't need it. You know, you can get a cake without it. So it wouldn't be essential. Now the essential nutrients are the the bare minimum that we need. The non-essential, they, they actually can be very helpful and there's a lot of research papers to suggest that there's, there's a lot of um, non-essential nutrients that we can apply for a yield increase, but it's not the bare minimum that we need. So keep that in mind and we'll talk about that uh, a little bit in a bit. But from here, we have two ways that we can get um, plant nutrients. So we can either get them through the air and uh, water, and then we can also get them through the soil. So when we look at the air, um, the, the two main things that the plants get from the air are carbon dioxide, which is what we breathe out, and, con and, and we get water from water, pretty much. And then effectively we get everything else from the soil. Within that, we have two main groups to categorize our plant nutrients. We have our macros and we have our micro plant nutrients, also called trace. So, and really, the only um, difference between these is the amount that's used in the plant. So macros, in, if you if you draw out the plant and measure how much of that nutrient there is in the plant, there's point there's more than 0.5 grams per kilo of dry plant material of these macros, and the microbes there's less than 0.5 grams per dry kilo um, of weight of the plant, and really that's that's it. And a lot of people get confused with it says micros, so they're not as important, but that's incorrect. Micros are just as important as your macros. You just need to supply them in less amount. Just as important, remember, it cannot grow without the plant, cannot be replaced, and it cannot metabolize. Yeah, it cannot metabolize if that nutrient is not there. So they're all important 
together, which means you need to be applying more than just NPK, just saying. So on our macro side, we've got carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Not many people think of these as nutrients, but they are nutrients. They get them from the air and the um, water. Very important. These actually make up the majority of the plant. Then from our soil, our macros from the soil, we have nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, and potassium. Now, typically, these are the nutrients that are applied uh, in the most amounts. NPK, it basically on every single fertilizer label, they use the most. Next, we have calcium, uh, sulfur, and magnesium. They're, you know, just like everything else, very important. On our micros, we have our iron, manganese, boron, molybdenum, or moly for short, copper, zinc, uh, chloride, and nickel. Now, you can get fertilizer for all of these. I think nickel's a bit difficult because it's a heavy metal. Um, but nevertheless, if you're deficient in any of these, it's a very easy fix. You just apply the fertilizer, either a foliar, which is better for your micros because these are pretty interesting the way they react within our soil and in our plant. Um, or you can apply them as a, um, a granule, um, like our NPK. And there's some different other forms for other things. Now we'll be going into the function of each of these nutrients uh, in future videos. Now finally, we have our non-essential nutrients. Now, these are very important for our plant, but they're not, you know, required necessarily. And so the plant can still produce a good yield without it, but it'll produce even better yield with this. So there's heaps of different non-essential nutrients. I'm not probably not going to get into them all. Um, it's important to remember that although they, here, what we've got here are the main ones, most likely that almost every single nutrient in our periodic table will probably be used at some point. Now, you might go, oh, what's you know, uranium is going to be used for? And it might not be, but more and more, like every day we're coming out with new research to, to suggest that you know, some amount is used in our plant or could be used in our plant. And so there's 17 essential nutrients. And I think uh, in total, there's like 80 different uh, non-essential nutrients that the plant doesn't need to use, but it's beneficial for it to use. Cool, so that's an intro to plant nutrition. I hope you found that really informative uh, and helpful. Again, make sure to subscribe so you can see future videos uh, of this that will help you um, grow better plants. Awesome. Thanks for watching. My name is Tilson and cheers.